Hi everyone, welcome to the Sunday Art Show. I'm Mike and this week we are down in the grounds of Powderham Castle, which is in Devon. It's actually quite close to Dawlish Warren, but we're not going to look at the castle today. I'm just out here looking for some deer, um, which, you know, they kind of roam wild on the grounds. They're kept in a huge enclosure, but they are sort of free to run around. So I was hoping to spot some deer to do some paintings, but on my way, I don't know if you can see on the left of the screen there, there's a sheep and there's some other sheep in under the trees. So I found these sheep sheltering in amongst the trees, this beautiful sunlight, beautiful arrangement of trees. And so I thought, okay, well actually I'll stop here. And this is the perfect spot for a quick outdoor sketch. So I've got, um, you know, my bag of supplies with me. I've got a Sharpie marker. I've got a pad of A4 mixed media paper that you can see here. And then in a little bit, I'll be using some Inktense pencils. But I'm beginning here, here with the black Sharpie marker pen. And I'm just quickly putting in an outline of the sheep. So, you know, as if you've seen previous videos, you'll know that uh, drawing animals outside is, can be a little bit challenging because they don't sit still at all, generally speaking. But this is early morning. This little flock of sheep, I get the impression they're having a little bit of a lion on the Saturday. You know, they've done their working week. Saturday, time to have a bit of a rest. Not getting up quite as early as usual, so they're a little bit sleepier and a little bit more content in amongst the shelter of the trees to just kind of chill out. For the most part, they're lying down. There are a few wandering around as well. So from my point of view, that's great because they're going to stay relatively still. So you can see this first sheet I just kind of blocked in with some loose line work, indicated some shadow and a couple of little fluffy bits on top, but I've kept the shapes very, very simple. And in a similar way, this arrangement of trees, although very beautiful, is quite complex and they're too numerous for me to get all of those down quickly. So I just want to spend a few minutes on this drawing. So what I'm going to do is put in a cut, you know, two or three trees to kind of suggest the scene rather than describe every single detail. So I think that first sheep that I've put in it uh, has actually got up and moved now. So moved on to a different animal. And uh, the idea here, again, you know, there are several, I don't know how well you can see on camera because they are, with the fish eye, it distorts things, it pushes them off into the distance. And even without that, you know, I, I don't want to intrude on the, on the flock, I don't want to startle them or anything, so I'm staying, you know, a fair way away. Um, but there are quite a lot of uh, sheep in, in amongst the trees, but I'm just going to do maybe three sheep, just to, again to suggest, you know, what's going on, rather than depict every single animal, every single tree, every single branch. And in addition to putting those animals in, you can see I'm starting to capture some of the long shadows which are being cast by the morning sun going from left down to diagonally down to the right. And that helps to, you know, create the sense of light. And also you can use those cast shadows to create a sense of form and communicate what's going on on the ground. So if the shadow is wobbling as it moves from left to right, that's going to tell you you've got bumpy ground. If you've got a completely straight edged shadow, then that's going to tell you the ground is smooth. So having put in the central tree there, big and bold, nice big branches, I'm now using more of a spidery leg effect and some, some sort of scratchier marks for the tree on the left. And I've started to put a little bit of shadow in on that central tree as well. So you can see the composition is starting to come together. I've got the big tree in the foreground, Got the two sheep, one either side. The tree on the left is off into the distance a little bit. So what we'll do now is I'm going to pop in a third sheep, but this one's going to be further off in the distance than the two main animals. So just that introduction of the, of the third sheep at a smaller scale helps to create a sense of depth. And then off in the far distance of our scene, you can see that we've got several trees um, and you know, we can see those in far, far less detail than we can the main copse of trees here in the foreground. So I'm just popping in a little bit of an outline and, and, and really that's all I need in terms of the line work. So having used the Sharpie pen to get the composition down on the page, I'm now switching to the Inktense pencils. And unfortunately, I'd forgotten to bring a supply of, of water for the art, but I had remembered to bring some drinking water. So 
I've just dampened um, a paper towel there, just taking a few more reference photos, possibly for some paintings in the future. And now I'm coming in, starting to introduce some blue to the sky. Now I'm deli I've deliberately just done that at the top of the paper. And now with the damp paper towel, the ink tense pencils allow me to move that colour around, much as you would put down a wash of watercolour, except once the ink tense is dry, it's completely waterproof. So it's really, you know, really a cool way to carry several colours with you. Very lightweight, very compact, and with just a little bit of water. I would normally do this with a brush, to be honest, but the paper towel is, is working really quite nicely. Um, I can get some introduction of colour into our scene. So just switched colours now and putting in some shading, just a little bit of gentle colour for those distant trees. So standard thing, if, if things are off in the distance, you want them to be more blue and more faint with less detail than stuff in the foreground. And, you know, we're not going to be able to do a full treatment here today out, in, you know, out in the uh, open air, but we can still create a sense of space and depth. So just gradually building up layers with the pencil application and then using the damp paper towel to soften those all of those lines and, and really just almost obliterate the lines. So, you know, it really does look as if you've just put down a wash of colour. So it's really nice. And the mixed media paper is great as well because it doesn't buckle very easily. So, you know, it's that's good as well. You don't have to worry about getting it wet, really. Now, we've got this lovely sunlight coming in from the left, so I'm adding in some yellow next. And notice I'm keeping the directions of the pencil strokes. They were coming in from you know, top left to bottom right to, to mimic both the lay of the land and the direction of the sunlight. And I'm using some of that yellow, not really the right colour, but I'm using some of the yellow on the left-hand side of that main tree to help create the sense of light as well. And now we're back in with our paper towel. And if some of the blue that's left on the towel goes into the, the yellow, that's really OK, because, you know, that'll just give us a hint of green. Um, but I don't think that's happened at all, as it turns out. So so you can see already now we really are getting a sense of light. And the first sheet that I did where I haven't put any colour down in contrast to the yellow, that that white unpainted area, that seems much brighter. So I'm just recording a little video now for Instagram. I posted that back in April when I actually actually filmed this footage. Um, so that was good fun, actually. That was actually my first ever video posted on Instagram because I haven't been using it for, for, for very long. So that was kind of nice to be out in the countryside and still be able to update some social media with a real world look at, at how I do the art and stuff. That was, that was actually, you know, good fun. So those layers have dry, the blue is dry, the yellow is dry, but now I'm coming in with a green. And I'm adding a little bit more texture now, suggesting the presence of grass, keeping those pencil marks going, generally speaking, up and down, but deliberately varying the directions, because you definitely don't want a series of parallel lines, because, you know, this isn't um, a perfect situation. As with all things in nature, there's, there's a lot of variations, but when it comes back on camera, You'll notice that the marks I'm putting down at the bottom for the grass are substantially bigger than those around that sheep on the right. And again, this helps to suggest a sense of depth. You know, just these subtle little touches, even if we're giving a very loose impressionist treatment to the painting or the drawing, then, you know, you can still follow the rules in a loose way and in a, and, and in a quite an efficient way as well. You know, you don't have to uh, be too laborious about it and um, you can just sort of Put in a few hints, a few key marks. Now I'm coming in with a, a brown now and using that for the shadow colour on the tree. And I deliberately put some of that over the yellow just a moment ago. And you can see I also extended it into the sky beyond where I'd indicated the lines of the tree with the Sharpie pen. So although I'm drawing and although I'm using pencils and marker pens, I'm still using some of the painting techniques that, you know, we would think to use, just you know, not sticking to the line work too carefully. I'm not colouring in entirely. Obviously, I am in part. So what I was trying there was seeing, well, can I use some of the some of the colour I had left on the paper towel to just put a bit of colour on the shadow area of the sheep? But the ink tents had completely dried, so I needed to just moisten the towel again, which you just saw. Now I'm spreading the colour around on the tree to soften some of those marks. 
and then into the, the grass as well. And, and again, I don't care if some of that brown and yellow goes into the green. That's going to add a little bit of subtle variation to the tone. So having got a sense of light and a sense of space and coloured in, you know, for the most part, the stuff that I consider the background, you know, as an artist, I tend to focus on the animals mostly. Um, so now that's what I'm doing. I'm coming back to the sheep and overlaying some brown and blue. I might have used a bit of purple there. I can't quite see too well watching this back. To get a mix of colours for the shadow parts of the sheep, so the bits which are shaded from the sun which is coming in from the left. So the right hand side of the animals are much darker. And then I'm spreading some of that color with the, with the damp paper towel. Being careful to leave some of the animal white so we still get that highlight, that sense of sunlight bouncing off of the fleece. Today you can see I didn't bring an easel with me. I just wanted to stay fairly mobile and light. And for the most part that works quite well, you know, because it's just a small pad of paper uh, A4 is about 11 inches by 8 inches, but I, as you can see with my, the shake of my hand there, I was starting to get a bit, um, a bit of an achy hand just kind of holding the pad in the same position while trying to work away. So I'm now going back to that branch which I'd only taken so far with the Sharpie marker and extending that further to kind of suggest the, you know, the entangled and the weaving and the intertwining of some of the higher up branches here. So I'm trying to keep the marks nice and lively. I've, I've got some nice precise marks down with the description of the, the animals and the initial trunks of the trees. But when I get up into the, the tangle of the, of the branches, I'm trying to keep things livelier. So I want to keep some energy going with this sketch. I want it to look good in the end, but I, I definitely want to sense that you know this was done on the spot. This isn't a carefully considered uh, studio piece. We're out in the field, we're out in the open air. The sheep are just a few feet away. I'm just adding some more cast shadows there. So I want to create a sense of being there, really, you know, a sense that, you know, so people can look at this and hopefully see, oh, yeah, you know, that was, the, he says it was done in the open air. I can, I can believe that, you know, that's, uh, that's got some life to it. Hope that's, that's my aim anyway. That's my aim. Now that bit just there where I smudged the, the branch work, that's actually one of my favorite parts of the finished picture. I love little accidents like that where, with just a random flourish with something as crude and you know we would think as imprecise as a paper towel that's had a nice effect i think it's there's a sort of mistiness to that mark um and i'm trying to do a little bit more of that on the left it isn't working quite as well but but again if i come to do a painting a more elaborate more involved painting of this scene i'll use that little accident there you can see i'm also smudging the cast shadows to inform the work I do back at home. So I'll try to include some of that style of mark making on the finished outdoor sketch, which you can see there. So having sketched the sheep, I thought, right, let's see if we can find some deer. This, this was the original intention. So I've walked, you know, several yards, a couple of hundred yards now from that initial copse of trees and taken a left. And now I'm just heading to a different part of the, of the grounds. So it really is quite an extensive park they've got here that you, you're free, you know, it's a public footpath. I'm not trespassing here. You're free to wander around. Uh, and it's, it's a really lovely spot. You know, it's, I guess you could say, well, it's a little bit sort of man-made and artificial because obviously the deer and the sheep are, are kept in. It's not the wilds of Dartmoor, for example, uh, or the coast of Cornwall, but it's still, still absolutely beautiful. And uh, I've just spotted some deer off in the distance. So I'm using my other camera now. And you can see they are off a ways there, so they were too far away. They wouldn't come closer to the fence on this day. So I didn't do any outdoor sketches of them. But I'll use that reference for a painting, and I will come back on another day to try and get luckier, basically. Hopefully the deer will be closer to the fence, and I'll be able to do some sketches. So headed back to the car, dumped the stuff, um, headed home. And then I've put the finished sheep sketch up on my website. So if you go to mikejewelry.com, click on the sheep paintings gallery, and then it's currently the second row down. You can click on that image. And if you want to, wherever you see the green box, if you click on that, it will give you a zoomed in image of the finished drawing. So you can get a much closer and clearer look at the pen work and the mark making I used and the colours I used as well of this particular sketch.
anyway, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's one of my favourite recent outdoor adventures, actually. I really enjoyed sketching those sheep. It was absolutely a beautiful morning in a lovely, clear spring day. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. As usual, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks again for watching.